Hey everybody, so a while back I did a Jacob's Creek wine review and apparently a lot of people like watching it. But then I found there was like a next tier of Jacob's Creek. So I figured maybe a lot of people will like to watch that too. And, and maybe it might taste good. So take a look at this review, stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine Island Dime. Before we begin today's video, if you like it, don't forget to subscribe, like, click that notification bell so you get notified every time a video gets posted. And if you want to engage with me in the comments, that is awesome too. So today I'm reviewing the 2018 Jacobs Creek Limestone Coast Shiraz. It's 14.5% alcohol by volume, and I paid $10 for it at my local store. Um, screw top, plus one. I, I really like... I should, I should rephrase that. I have a love-hate relationship with Australian Shiraz. I find some I love, and I just don't want to live without. And then I find some that remind me of like California Zinfandel, which are just kind of, for the most part in my opinion, overdone, way too dense, jammy. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some things I don't like about it, but I'm hoping that this falls kind of into that love category. So from a color standpoint, you're exactly what I would expect. You are a medium purple, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, on the nose. Ooh. Got a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of clove. You got some plum, black plum, a little bit of blackberry, a touch of black cherry, a little bit of soil, like a sort of a wet earth. And then there's also this note of like, it's like a slight touch of leather. There's this vanilla effect that's going on. Almost like a slightly, very, very slightly toasted coconut. Do you use American oak, does it say? I should probably read the bottle sometimes. No, it doesn't say. I'll go to the website and see if I can find uh, what, what, this, what this barrel is made out of. But yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of American oak. It, it kind of reminds me of some California uh, Syrah that I've had. Hmm, well, I, let's see how this tastes. Full body, medium. I mean, if there's a medium plus alcohol, I'd give it to you. Because you're, you're starting to present just a little kind of peeking out. Um, Anyway, so so medium alcohol, really medium plus if I could. Full body, medium plus tannins. Tannins are a little bit uh, gritty. They, there is a, a little bit of like a scratchiness to them. Um, I forgot to mention it, intensity on the nose. Uh, medium plus, intensity on the palate, medium plus. Acid, medium plus. It is a dry wine. Ooh, it's bone dry. The finish. It's actually only a medium finish. Like that lingering effect of the tannin is still in my mouth, but I'm not getting, I'm not getting a ton of uh, flavor that, that persists. So medium finish, it's just a lot of black fruit. It really is. It's a lot of plum, blackberry, black cherry. I mean, it's, it's all that. There is that earthiness. There is a little bit of black pepper. There's a touch, very minorous touch of leather. The vanilla, the coconut, everything else is there. What you smell is what you get, basically. Oh, and there's, hmm. Maybe there's just a little bit, a little bit of like a green bell pepper. It's Shiraz. It, it really is. Uh, so let's get to the Blick. Balance. Yeah, I think you're in balance. All the structures there, you're, you're, you're pretty high on the tannin, but I mean, over time, hopefully you would go away. I don't know if that's going to happen with one of these things attached to the top of it. But I mean, if you're looking for a steak wine and you just want to get it and have it with the steak right now, then this is actually a pretty darn good wine to pick with it, especially if you're going to use sort of like a tra traditional seasoning, like like a garlic, salt and pepper type of mix. So this will this will work really well with that. So yeah, I mean, overall balance is there. In terms of length, length is, well, it was medium. So you get half a point. Intensity, Medium plus on both, but neither of them are pronounced. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you half a point. And from complexity, 
Well, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a lot of fruit. I'm getting a touch of tertiary, just a touch, which I don't know why that's there with the 2018. And I am getting barrel nuts. The tertiary is really not developed enough. I would hope the fruit to be developing into that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you half a point. So ultimately, that gives you two and a half points. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a good. I, I, I think if you can find a way to allow for this to sort of settle down the tannin a little bit, and to develop a little bit more of those tertiary notes, especially on the fruit. Yeah, this wine, this wine could go into very good, uh, but it is a solid good. And for $10, especially if you wanna buy a wine that you're gonna take home, get to temp, crack open, and enjoy with the steak. Yeah, yeah, this, this is a fantastic wine to do that with. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried the 2018 Jacobs Creek Limestone Coast Shiraz? Have you interested? If you have, leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, like seriously, I'm gonna go like put this back in the wine fridge since it's a crew top, it makes it easy. Uh, and then I'm gonna go cook a steak. And as soon as that has come to the perfect rested reverse sear goodness, I'm gonna crack this thing back open and just pair the hell with it. I'll see you later.